Thank you for staying with us. And uh, this time we're switching our focus to the petroleum pump price. Remember recently the, it was reduced. It appears that the impact of the coronavirus on the global oil prices defined a new plan for, of action for the economy as the oil price is being dropped. To give us insight to what has brought about the reduction in oil prices, we're being joined by Odin Ajimogobia, a chairman, expert advisory panel, Nigeria Natural Resource Charter, a former Minister of State for Petroleum Resources. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Ajimogobia. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, thank you. We're good. We're good. And we're sure that you're well, too. Yes, I am. I'm keeping well. I'm trying to follow the prescriptions of the experts, the medical people and scientists to try and stay safe, keep washing hands and staying indoors as much as possible. That's a good one. Okay, so you're an expert on this part. So let's look at, since you're, you're taking expert advice, let's see if we can pull some expert advice from you. As regards this um, petroleum thing, now, yes, global oil prices but dropping, the Nigerian government had to adjust its budget and all of that. Even the pump price of petroleum products, um, PMS to be precise, was also reduced and, and all of that. Let's look at the whole picture, first of all, before we go into the nitty-gritty. What's your assessment of the situation as it is? Well, I think in many ways it's unprecedented. Um, we've always had peaks and troughs with regard to the price of oil in the global markets. Um, things like um, winter, for example, as you go into winter months, the energy, pri any energy prices uh, are affected by the demand. There's more demand for energy during winter months and less demand as you go to the summer months. And that's why people are predicting uh, that as we're going to April, May, June, as the summer months come, there's naturally a lower demand for energy and therefore um, less, the prices are affected by that. Now, here we have two situations. You have the coronavirus, which has collapsed demand in an unprecedented way, not just in one part of the world, as we saw in, say, 1998, 1999, when East Asia was affected. But this is a complete global phenomenon. Uh, demand's affected across the globe, and therefore that's going to affect prices, of course. Um, coupled with that is you had a, an unfortunate dispute between Saudi Arabia and Russia, um, at the OPEC meeting, now uh, the non-OPEC and OPEC come together to try and ensure that they balance prices and balance the market. This time that didn't work, and I think that's what's created this unprecedented situation. Fortunately, OPEC met uh, this week and um, agreed finally. They were able to resolve their differences and um, agreed, agreed to a cut of 10 million uh, barrels per day uh, during the next three months. Uh, but it's going to take a while for that to reflect in the price. In fact, we already saw that immediately after the meeting, the price came down. Rather, it, came, it wasn't affected. I mean, the price came down even further. Uh, so there is, a, there is a challenge. We really have to um, watch the, the, do what we need to do to try and overcome this pandemic. The price of uh, AGO is not responding the way the price of PMS is. Well, that's another thing. I think this, this, this situation provokes us to try and do the things that we should have done a long time ago. Uh, that's reform of the oil and gas sector. AGO and uh, kerosene and um, the jet fuel were liberalized. And so marketers can bring these products in and sell at whatever they consider to be market price. Therefore, um, it, this should reflect, when the price of oil has come down, this should reflect in a um, reduction in the price of these products as well. But because they're liberalized and the marketers are a, almost a cartel, um, they can determine what prices are. I think this is where the PPPRA um, government ought to play a role in making sure that they protect the public to ensure that people are not price gouging and uh, taking advantage of the situation. Okay, well, since you, you mentioned the PPPRA, let's, let me read out some data from their website. As of January 31st, the expected open market price per litre of PMS was um, 160 Naira 44 Kaba. 
uh, by 28th of February was 141 naira and 2 kaba. By the 6th of March, it was 134 naira and 89 kaba. And by the 16th of March, it dropped to 83 naira 69 kaba. Um, what the price of pet PMS at the pump price right now is 125 naira to about 123. 0.5 naira per liter. Now, that is them working with the open market prices, determining what it's going to cost. But if we look at that and look at the fact that the price of crude oil is dropped, dropped to a point where Nigeria's cost of producing per liter, estimated, because there's really no clear data as that, is about 33 naira per liter. So if you do that, the numbers, and weigh it against when, what you said, doing what we should have done long ago now. How do we begin to move in all of this? Well, fortunately, the uh, group managing director of uh, NNPC recently announced that the scrapping of subsidies and um, over-recovery, under-recovery, rather, um, that's, that's plain. And in this environment of a $20, 20 to $30 oil price, there is no subsidy. And as the PPPRA template uh, demonstrated, um, as at the 16th of March, um, 83 Naira, 61 Kobo ought to have been the open market price. Um, but as you know, the minister announced a 20, 20 Naira reduction to um, 125, and then it was further reduced to 123. Now, I think that needs to be looked at. I mean, the PPPRA ought to give indicative prices as to what the open market value open market price ought to be for us to buy petrol at the pumps and i think therefore this is an opportunity for as i said regulators to play their role in ensuring uh, that the public the consumer gets the benefit of the low oil price in nigeria we i've said this before we we tend to want to eat our cake and have it we want to have a high oil price uh, when we had 100 100 dollars 110 dollars we were rejoicing because it's good for the treasury um, but it's at the same time, it's terrible for the pump price because a higher oil price means a higher pump price. I think this is an opportunity for us to go back to the reforms and to try and ensure that we focus on ensuring value in the oil industry chain. How would that work when the institutions set up to regulate are not allowed to do so? Well, I think we, we, we're, it, we have a hybrid. We have, in, in the petroleum sector, we have a hybrid. We have PMS that's being, ad, the price is administratively determined. Um, and then you have a liberal price with respect to other products in the industry. I think that needs to be uh, reappraised. We need to determine which way we're going. And even where you have a liberal price, um, the regulator needs to intervene where it sees, it's, it sees that, um, as, as Mark mentioned, um, the price is not reflecting costs, and therefore people are taking advantage. Now, uh, Mr. Mr. Jungoba, you, you mentioned that uh, the MD of NMPC announced in the course of the week that there would no longer be subsidy on uh, petroleum products. What is the meaning of this in real terms to Nigerians? It ought to, it ought to mean at the in the current scenario, it ought to mean a petrol price at the pump um, that reflects the lower oil price, a significantly lower oil price. Effectively, what it means is that when marketers bring oil in and to the country, bring, import petroleum products into the country, they bring it at a cost. There's the cost at which they, they purchase it, wherever they purchase it from. There's a cost of transportation to the ports. There's a post, the cost of transporting from the port to the pump. And then there's a margin for profit. Now, what's happened is when the oil price was high, effectively, and the, the price at the pump was administratively determined, what happened was that there's a disparity between the pump price and the cost to the marketers. And what the subsidy was, was government was paying the marketers the difference. We forced you to sell at 120 naira per litre or 145 naira per litre as it was. Um, but we know that the cost to you is 230 naira at the pump. So the difference between 230 naira and 145 naira is the subsidy which is paid 
to the marketers. Now, since NNPC took over this role, they have to recover that money that they've spent to bring to make sure that there's petrol at the pumps. That's what they call the under recovery. Whether it's an under recovery or subsidy, it, it's the same thing. They have to recover monies that they've spent because they are subsidizing the price of petrol at the pump. Oh, the, that thing about the price, pump price, um, in 2016, when the, the government increased the price of PMS from 97 to 145 per litre, the PPPRA said they were going to be doing the adjustments quarterly. Now, with what we have now, do you think they have the political will to do this? Because right now their template shows, as you said, 83 naira, which is on their website, 83 naira. But what was announced is 120. 3.5, down to 123.5. So do you think there's a political will to see this through? I, I think they, they have to. I, I really think we have no choice. Um, we're in, in uncharted waters, and this gives us an opportunity. I mean, it's, 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 it's awful for the Treasury, um, but this really does give the government an opportunity to implement all the reforms in the industry that we at the um, Nigerian Natural Resource Charter have been advocating for many years, we issue these benchmark reports and advice that we offer to government to try and rationalize and implement reform policies to streamline the industry. It's, I think the, the group managing director made the announcement. Um, that's one of the issues that we have um, targeted in, the, in our reports, um, that that's a policy issue. Um, whether there's going to be subsidy or no subsidy is a policy issue. We would expect that to come from the minister um, who is in charge of policy. Now, I hope he will um, reiterate this and say that this is the case. But the issue is, is a non-issue at the moment because of the low oil price. The issue will arise when the price of oil goes back up, which it will. It will go back up. It may take longer because of the what I said earlier about the the fact that this is a global phenomenon, that there's global, the demand globally has been, um, has collapsed. So it may take longer. And that's why we saw that uh, during this last OPEC meeting, in spite of the agreement between OPEC members and the cut of 10 million, 10 million barrels out of OPEC's um, 32 or 30 million barrels is a significant cut, unprecedented. They're also trying to get non-OPEC, um, which was part of the meeting, to cut another 5 million barrels. That's a significant amount of oil out of the market. But there's probably the reduction um, in terms of the collapse demand was probably much more than that. So it's a little too little too late. And so it's going to take a while before it starts climbing up again slowly. But the point I'm trying to make is that when it does go up, government will then be faced with the challenge of what to do when the prompt price now goes back up from 83 that was put in the PPPRA template to 160 or 170, depending on what the global market oil price does. I think that it's important now for government to now put in place mechanisms to get the trust. This whole issue about subsidy and the, the fact that there'll be riots on the street if the pump price of petrol is allowed to uh, rain freely is an issue of trust. The people do not trust the government. They basically say government is not providing anything for us. And... Uh, this is something, this is one benefit. We can get cheap oil, cheap petrol at the pumps. Um, so I think there's a trust issue, and I think this is an opportunity for government to put in place compensation mechanisms to protect the vulnerable in society um, against an elevated oil price, um, oil price and pump price when it comes, because it will inevitably come. The, the, you talked about mechanisms here. Um, there's this school of thought, I believe, that if the refineries we're actually working as they should, then the price of PMS or petroleum products would stay low within the country. Okay, so uh, within the week, there was news that the GM, uh, the group general manager of uh, NNPC, the, the man at the helm of affairs, talked about the refineries being run by a private, by a private sector, sort of not necessarily privatizing it. Do you think that kind of mechanism would work to meet that school of thought that says if the refineries are working, the prices will stay low? It, it will help. It will certainly help if the refineries are working. It will help because basically you cut out the cost of shipping, which is a significant cost. 
Um, at the same time, you have to weigh the cost of refining in huge refineries. Singapore doesn't produce a, a, a pint of oil, uh, but they have some of the biggest refineries in the world, and therefore they're efficient in the process of refining. Now, if you go to a Singapore refinery and buy your petrol and import it, then the cost, the difference in cost between produce, collecting your oil from the pe petrol from Kaduna refinery or Potakot or Wari refineries is, is that differential in cost and bringing it from the Singapore refinery to the pump. Um, they, it, it, it should be lower, but it may not be as significantly low as people are anticipating. The, the issue is, look at the countries around us and look at the pump price. You'll find that it's significantly higher than what we have. Regardless, in the, Ghana has a refinery, Cote d'Ivoire has a refinery. Uh, their pump price is higher than what we have. So while it may come down slightly, I don't, I don't see that significant um, lowering of the price. And that's why I say that this is a time to put in place some buffers um, for the common man. If, if the price of petrol goes up, the price of food goes up, the price of transportation goes up, um, there are ways in which subsidies can be targeted to these vulnerable groups to ensure that the rest of the country that doesn't really need, need, need a subsidy um, can go on. And we can save currently between two and three billion dollars a year that we're literally spending, throwing away in subsidies. Yeah, you mentioned the cost, uh, the, 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 the uh, one that's used by the majority of the people in Nigeria, which I think is kerosene. And that is an issue because uh, the price seems to be higher than what the people can, the people can afford. Uh, what is being done to move people from using kerosene to using gas, which seems to be cheaper? That, that too. That, that's, another, that's another issue. Um, talking about reform of the industry. Um, Nigeria saw gas for so many years, and unfortunately until recently, saw gas as a risk rather than a resource. And therefore, the, the infrastructure to develop our gas resources simply wasn't there. Now we have to focus on gas um, and to try and move people away from uh, firewood and kerosene, uh, which have caused a lot of havoc in, in, in homes, in poor homes across the country, um, to gas, which we have in abundance, uh, but the infrastructure has to be built, the investment has to be made in order to be able to do this. And there are a few projects on, in, on the ground that are designed for this, but government needs to support those people who are focused on gas development in order for this to happen. The other risk, which I, I talked again, and I can't say it enough, about the regulators uh, taking playing their role, is, is the risk of where you have a high kerosene price and you ha have a low PMS, that's uh, petrol price, there is a risk and tendency for unscrupulous people to spike kerosene with petrol because basically you increase the volume of kerosene that you can sell or diesel for that matter. That's a huge risk because petrol, as you know, is highly inflammable and you could suddenly start having accidents because people don't know that the, the um, kerosene that they're buying or the diesel they're buying and putting into their generators has been spiked by low-cost petrol to increase the volume of diesel or kerosene. So this is a time when DPR, PPPRA, needs to be very vigilant in ensuring that the consumer is protected. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. We've been speaking to Mr. Odin Ajumogobia, Chairman, Expert Advisory Panel of the Nigerian Natural Resource Charter and former Minister of State for Petroleum Resources. Thank you for sharing your morning with us. Thank you for having me. Sunrise will be back in a moment. Please stay with us.